today, there's still this wide range opinion when it comes to who was Jesus, but probably even more important, who is Jesus? You know, in, in, in my over 30 years of being a pastor, um, I, I've heard more people than I dare to recall say something like, my Jesus would never, and then there's this blank that they fill in. My Jesus would never say that. My Jesus would never do that. My Jesus would never ask of me this or that, right? But here's the truth. You don't get to make your own personal Jesus. You know, in most cases, there's the real Jesus, and then there's the Jesus that we've all made up. Like our own personal Savior, but not like our personal Savior. But this personal Savior, it's, it's a lot like Burger King, right? Like we want a Jesus made our way. Or it's Build-A-Bear, where we want to assemble a deity that fits us best. Uh, there's this real Jesus and then there is a fake one that we make up. And, and, and really, uh, it is a deified reflection of us. Like, I like this, so my Jesus is going to be. I, I don't like that, so yeah, my Jesus is going to be against that. But again, you, we don't get to choose who Jesus is. Uh, it reminded me, um, when I was in college, when we were on the road, we, our coach was obsessed with this place called Golden Corral. Uh, we probably were the only team uh, that ever went there, but we always went there, especially on Friday nights. Man, that was his place. And we would go, and uh, some of the boys, uh, some of the concoctions that they would come up with, I mean, they'd come back and they would have a plate overflowing with like a yogurt parfait, uh, some spare ribs, sushi, an omelet, and then, of course, the ice cream. And it's like, how did you like decide to mix all of that together? And, and basically what happened was when they were in the line, like that's kind of what looked good to them. And, and I think a lot of us would like to have a golden corral Jesus. Like we get to go through the line and the things about Jesus we like, we put on our plate, those that maybe, you know, convict us or go against us or it's a hard truth about him. We're like, yeah, I think I'm going to pass on that, right? But we don't get to choose. And some people claim, you know, Jesus is a great teacher. Others say he's a radical zealot. Others say, you know, he was just a nice guy. And then there are those who say, no, he's just a figment of humanity's imagination. And I believe still today there's those who just go, you know, there's something special about him. But he's not my savior. In other words, the response is the same. It's rejection of the true Jesus. But Jesus isn't discouraged by their answers. Matter of fact, I, I think he's going to re-aim the question. And I get the sense this is what he wanted to do all along. And in Matthew 16, 15, it shifts. And he says this, but what about you? Speaking to the 12. What, what about you? He asked, who do you say I am. So who do the disciples say? Really, we could say, who does Peter say? Because he's going to speak for everyone else. And in verse 16, it says this, Simon answered, you are the Messiah, meaning the Savior. You are the son of the living God. And, and I hope that you see the contrast in those answers. People versus Peter. Right? Here's what we see. There's uncertainty with the people. There is certainty with, pe with Peter. Peter believes Jesus isn't just a teacher or a zealot or a person who's very special or even spiritual. No, Peter says that you are Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the long-awaited one, the much-needed one. You are the Son of of the living God. He's not just one of the prophets. He's not just one who was predicted about or they ate for. No, he was the Messiah. Peter's leaving nothing to the imagination, declaring that Jesus is the unique one. Jesus is the other one. That Jesus is deity, that he's a savior. That there is no one else like 
him. That's how Peter answers the most important question that's ever asked. Because Christianity isn't about a ritual or a routine of Sunday morning worship. It's not even a body of doctrine. It's not a code of conduct. It's not behavior modification. You know what Christianity is? It's a person. Christianity is Christ, and Christ is God the Son. 